The Ryzen 7000 X3D parts are just around the corner and already the consensus is split between those who are excited for them and those who simply don't care. Especially when you see how the performance compares against the likes of the 7950X non-3D part. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. With this Thermaltake Tough Power 1350 watt fully modular power supply with full ATX 3.0 compatibility, a Smart Zero fan and PCIe Gen 5 ready, my PC will have all the life it needs. It's alive, it's alive. To find out more, click the link in the description below. So we all know what it's like when a new product gears up to launch as we start seeing news floating around about benchmarks and how it compares. And for the most part, you have to take things with quite a large pinch of salt to know what's factual and what's not. As we know, three models are joining the Zen 4 lineup with the 7800X3D, 7900X3D and 7950X3D, which is uh, interesting kind of considering the 5000 series only actually saw a single 5800X3D part. But as I mentioned, when that launched, I honestly saw it as a kind of testing the water type processor and was more seen as a start of things to come for the future. And now that future is here. Now in a focus on being classed as the world's best gaming processors, AMD are bringing three models to the fold for those who not only want to game, but those who still want to have the ability to use their systems for productivity based tasks too. It's almost like AMD realized that consumers use their systems for things other than gaming. I mean, who would have known? Now, while the 7800X3D is likely to be the most popular part based on specs, performance and pricing, the 7950X3D was always going to be the Halo product that kind of does all the marketing talk. And if the latest benchmarks are anything to go by, then it's not got off to the best start. So I did say that benchmarks should generally be taken with a large pinch of salt, but these figures are straight out of the Blender and Geekbench 5 data rankings. So have been tested and then the reviewer forgot to either not publish the results or use the full suite, which actually stops that from happening in the first place. Rookie error, or maybe clever marketing by AMD. Who knows? AMD knows. Well, not so clever as it doesn't actually look all that good, especially as the 7950X3D will demand another $100 on top of the bog standard 7950X, where in Blender it comes in with 5.6% less performance compared to its counterpart with less L3 cache. Which considering the only other difference from the cache is that the 7950X3D comes in with a base clock of 4.2GHz compared to the 4.5GHz on the non-3D part, well, could this all be shaping up to be not so great after all? Now, obviously this is one test and anyone who judges an unreleased product on one test is frankly quite silly in my opinion. So luckily we have benchmarks for Geekbench 5 too, which paints the picture a little more, where we see anywhere between kind of three and 13% differences in performance across single core tests and anywhere between 10 and a whopping 16% differences when looking at multi-core performance. Could the base clock really make that much difference? Or could it be as simple as the TJ Maxx, which on the 7950X is 95 degrees, while the 7950X3D has a max operating temperature of 89 degrees. So maybe the non 3D part can't boost as high and well, as long due to thermal headroom. That's something we'll definitely look at when we eventually get the part in, because sadly, AMD are a bit lackluster on samples for this launch and we won't be getting one for launch day. I know, sad times. So what can you take away from these benchmarks? Well, as we know, the extra L3 cache as seen on the already released 5800X3D makes a huge difference in terms of gaming performance, but offers up kind of nothing more when it comes to productivity, which is, well, the main reason why AMD are releasing three SKUs on the AM5 platform. But to play devil's advocate, doesn't look like that's worked as well as what AMD had hoped with performance that in some cases is significantly worse across workload based benchmarks. Now obviously, I will always, always advise against buying a pre-release product, no matter the situation, and instead to wait for data, benchmarks and unbiased testing from reviewers before making any form of decision. But if the sample situation is anything to go by, and kind of what I've actually heard from retailers, then sales stock may be an issue too. Meaning that if you actually wait too long, well, you may miss out completely, at least for the time being. 
Sticking with the 7000 series from AMD and an overclocker from Scatterbencher, a site that caters for overclocking attempts, has seen the Ryzen 7900's Radeon-based iGPU clocked by a massive 40% from its stock graphics frequency of 2200 MHz all the way up to 3100 MHz, which in turn garnered another 42% more performance. I mean, considering the 7000 series are the first primary Ryzen CPUs to feature integrated graphics, it's kind of a good sign of what's possible, again, for the future, where AMD could really rival the competition in other areas that could also make systems without a dedicated GPU a feasible option in years to come. Now, while the performance isn't groundbreaking now, it's more about the potential behind it. And with titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider seeing performance boosts of up to 41%, and CSGO seeing similar boosts of up to 37%, we now have a real contender for entry-level 1080p gaming in certain titles. No, of course, no one is going to want to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 17 frames per second, but CSGO at just under 80 FPS is still pretty impressive, especially if we end up seeing similar level performance on lower end 7000 series parts. Now with GPU prices still not at, let's say, comfortable levels for most consumers, this could be a great way of at least getting up and running and worrying about the all-important GPU at a later date. Of course, AMD still have their Ryzen G series of APUs for those who do want a bit more, but I don't know, it's an interesting concept nonetheless. Moving away from CPUs and to memory, and just this week, Corsair announced new capacity DDR5 memory kits, featuring 24 and 48 gig modules. This now means that PC builders and DIY enthusiasts are able to choose 48, 96, and even 192 gigabyte kits. Certainly a step in the right direction to help drive innovation, which in turn should help to drive costs down, as DDR5 is still at a level way above DDR4, which is still the more popular choice for those building a system right now. Especially if we're looking at Intel, as you're not actually confined to DDR5 like you are on AMD's latest AM5 platform. With speeds up to 5600 MHz for the 48 and 96 gig kits, they are available in either Vengeance or Vengeance RGB ranges, and are able to be picked up now from Corsair's own web store or authorized retailers, while the 192 gig 5200 MHz kit will be available on the 7th of March, all with support for Intel XMP. Now, once you have those amazing shiny new parts, you're still gonna wanna game on them. And while Half-Life 3 still isn't here, you may want to replay the original Half-Life, now with ray tracing. Considering the game's original release was back in 1998, it's been confined as one of the best games of all time, sparking huge uproar about a third full-length game in the series. But we're still holding out for that one. Now, with the original game looking pretty tired by today's standards, ray tracing has now been added through way of a, a mod that can be obtained from GitHub, and with some small changes on Steam, can have you up and running in no time. Though, what machine you'd need isn't quite as clear. There's no system requirements that have been revealed, though you'd assume that any card with ray tracing capabilities can be used, though at what performance levels is still a bit unclear. What is clear is that it also supports DLSS, so if anything like Portal RTX that saw performance take a complete nosedive, there is at least that small saving grace, as long as you have an NVIDIA-based GPU. And that about wraps this up. It's been a while since we did some kind of this week's news roundup. So if you appreciate these types of videos, then a like and a sub to the channel will tell me everything I need to know. And we'll continue to yeah do one a week. Also, if you love what we do and want to join the uh, super special exclusive club that is Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole ton of goodies, including behind the scenes content, a special area on our Discord, and to join our bi-weekly game nights where you get to kill me in CSGO or ram me off the track in GTA, then yeah, the link for you is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.